must say you look quite mega when that crown I made you. I can't wait for my subscribers to see the video. I brought a copy of the script, which we'll give to the editor tomorrow. Well, what do you think? It looks fine, but uh... no, don't come on, but we're going to have to delay it. Delay what? The video. Just for a few months. Why? Because of the baby. What baby? The crown. That show is my baby. Since when? They yeah, announced season four a few weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me that? I have tried, but your has been in the crown. Oh, so the start of life. Why season four? Good to do with anything. I love that show, by the way. I know, right? It's a protocol issue. Oh, pro. Oh, I understand. No, Margaret, you don't. This is just some scheme cooked out by all of you to put me no, off the channel. No, it's a clever strategy. Publishing a video at the same time with the show premiere would give us more traffic. But don't you see, until the premiere, they can't watch this video either. No, just for another six months. What? Another six months? Another six months? Margaret! Margaret! Most of the time I've been taken up by editing anyway. Margaret! Margaret! Hey. Hello, it's Austin. Uh, it's my apology to all the British people for butchering your accents. And also my apology for filling your nightmare for the next few days with my makeup. But we had so much fun recreating a scene from The Crown Season 2. I had to go all out for you guys and put myself in drag or whatever that was to play Princess Margaret for the scene The crown you see right there in our silly sketch is one of Queen Elizabeth's favorite crown It's called the Diamond Diadem officially known as George IV's State Diadem And as Ariana Grande once said I see it, I look it, I want it, I got it Well, things more like I made it So let's jump right into making it According to the Wikipedia description, the crown was made from gold and silver frame measuring 7.5cm tall and 90cm in diameter. So I replicated my frame with the same dimension, starting from the base. For this crown, we will be using a lot of metal filigree. So this is the type of filigree I use for the base, this rectangular with some intricate design. So simply we're just gonna whip out our handy dandy E6000 glue or you can use whatever glue that you like that works for you. And so we're just gonna squeeze a little bit at the edge and then take the next filigree and make sure that you angle it and then just attach them together. And take a pliers, a flat nose pliers to clamp the pieces together while the glue is set so that the bond would be strong. I want my crown to be extra strong so gluing them would not be enough so we take out some copper wire and we're gonna use the wire to tie the pieces together what I'm doing is I take a pieces about this much bend it in half and insert each of the ending to each of the holes on the filigree and then just twist in the wire together and then for the excess wire just put them around the filigree as so and to secure the wire so they won't unravel I'm just gonna add a drop of super glue and just repeat the process you will need about 7 filigree of this size for the base you might want to adjust uh, the amount of filigree that you use depends on their sizes so that the final diameter will fit your head because this crown is not going to be adjustable like the previous ones that I did so the glue has set and this is what we have as you can see it's an arch instead of a straight strip and that is why we must angle the pieces when gluing them together. A crown is supposed to be round. So we're gonna bend this strip around something cylindrical. To enclose the circle, just simply use some more glue. And of course some wire wrapping. Okay, so that is finished. And I will place the base on a flat surface for you guys to see. 
As you can see, the side is slightly angled upward and are straight up perpendicular. And that's why we need an arc. So for the next step, take a metal headband. It is not perfectly round, it's not a perfect circle. So take a flat nose pliers to bend it into a more perfect circle shape. Circle shape. Tongue twister. So now I'm gonna repeat the same thing three more times because we're gonna need four of these to line the edges of the base of the crown. So that visually is more polished. And also, it helps with the structure of the crown because as you know, filigree is very thin and completely frail and weak, just like me. Anyway, to align the base of the crown, we're gonna use a glue gun and we're gonna use hot glue to fill in the gap between the metal headband and the filigrees. Don't worry if the glue is a little bit messy because we're gonna clean them up later. I mean, after we're finished because pretty much later is never. Right? And when people say, I'm gonna see you later, probably they, they don't want to meet you again. God, why am I so self-deprecating today with all the, the jokes? My jokes are not even landing. See, I'm doing that again. So after I had patiently lined them with hot glue, this is what we ended up with. A beautiful border for the base, and now it started to look like a real crown. From Wikipedia, the diamond diadem has eight pieces around the top of the base, four bouquets and four crosses per day. To make the four crosses, you will need to drink up a whole can of coke. What we need is the aluminum sheet, I already cut out a bunch of these. I have used soda cans to make aluminum sheets for my crowns a lot of time in past videos, so you can check those videos out for the detail. So I printed out this cross pate pattern that I made from AutoCAD, and I will link the free download for you guys in the description box so you can print them out and follow along with this step. So cut out the print and we're gonna trace the outline onto the aluminum sheet with some sharpie. You gonna need to trace them out with some sharpies. Cut them out with a pair of scissors. Scissors worth best for aluminum sheets. It's important to mention that do not cut out the curves line yet. Just cut out the general squares outline first because for the next step we're gonna use some liquid super glue to glue these cute little squares onto craft form sheet. This is different from form core and form board. Craft form sheet, they are soft, they are bendable and kind of rubbery. The ideal thickness of your craft form should be between 2 to 4 mm. So once they are glued to the form, you can now cut out all of the curved lines. Now to reinforce the crosses pate, because of course they are aluminum sheet on form, so they are not structurally strong at all. So cut out a bunch of copper wire strips, the same length as the side of the squares. And then just use super glue to glue each of these wire to the edges of the crosses pate. And then for the final part, I take some thick metal strip, which is also from the metal headband. And this part will be the attachment so that we can attach these crosses pate onto the base of the crown. The crosses in the real crown have a slight curve uniformed with the base. So once again, I press the pieces against this glass jar so that we can add some curveness. And thanks to the wire working, the cross will retain the curveness. Now, I don't want to blow my own horn, but I must say, my replica is already better than the one used in the crown. Their crosses that you can see are completely flat. And so it is not accurate. So the last thing we will have to do with these crosses is to spray paint them. So back to the warehouse. 
It's 1 a.m. in the morning, by the way, so I had to whisper. I just had a piece of styrofoam that I stabbed with the pieces to hold them in place. And now I'm gonna spray panties and silver. Then I can finally go to bed. <coughs> oh, it smells so bad. Uh, the corner of the crosses pate, because they are cut apart, they could be bending in different directions. So, to keep them closely together, I take a piece of wire and I insert it 45 degrees from one side to the other side, so that I can keep these two corners together. Oh yeah, the wire is dipped in super glue, so that they can stay securely in place. And now that is done, we're gonna use E6000 to glue the crosses pate onto the base of the crown. Make sure that these four crosses pate are distributed evenly around the base of the crown. You should use a measuring tape to measure the diameter of the upper edge of the base. Divide that by four, and so that would be the distance between each of the crosses pate. Of course, I also did the wire wrapping off screen for these attachment pieces. Now the crosses are done, we can move on to the four bouquets. Each bouquet, according to Wikipedia descriptions, consisted of roses, thistles, and shamrocks, the floral symbols of England, Scotland, and Ireland, respectively. Of course, I couldn't find filigrees with the specific design that suits the actual crown. So this is my design for the bouquet from the filigrees that I had. So, while I'm working on this step, I will tell you some history about this crown that I'm replicating. The diamond diadem was made in 1820, exactly 200 years ago, for King George IV. Yes, you heard that right. The crown that was worn by Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria, and many other queen consorts was actually made for a dude by his commission. We all love an extra king. Uh, this is actually not from Wikipedia, but I read somewhere that um, there's rumors and a lot of observation that King George IV was actually a pretty flamboyant king. So, go girl! The king wore the, this diadem over his velvet cap of maintenance in the procession to his coronation at Westminster Abbey. Today, it is in possession of Queen Elizabeth II. She usually wears it in the procession to and from the annual state opening of the parliament. When not in use, the diadem is on display in the Queen's Gallery at Buckingham Palace. So I have finished the uh, four bouquets pieces, and now we're gonna attach them in between the crosses pate. The best way to do this is to, of course, firstly, take a measuring tape to measure the distance between the crosses pate and you have to divide that by two, so you can find the middle point. That will be where you're gonna attach the bouquet. You're probably thinking that the frame is finished. I thought so too, but no, it's not. After I finished the frame, I found that the crosses, they look very dull. They don't look like real metal, because obviously the cross are made from the inside of a soda can. So it's not as reflective and shiny as the filigree, which are made from real metal. So I found a solution for that, and that is aluminum foil. So cut out a piece of aluminum foil that is big enough to cover the entire cross and then you're gonna spread an even and sufficient amount of liquid superglue onto the surface of the cross and then quickly because superglue dried very fast slam the aluminum foil on top of the cross and now what you're gonna do is you want to smooth out all of the air bubbles underneath the aluminum foil until it is flat and evenly glued on top of the surface of the cross. And after the glue set, you can trim off the excess foil. You guys, be careful with super glue because they are very runny. And if you use too much of it, it's gonna run all over the paces and eventually on your fingertip. 
I almost lost a few patches of skin on my fingertips because of this step. So be careful, guys. And before we can call it a wrap for the frame, we will have to do some adjustment with the angles of the top pieces. Now the frame is finally finished. So you guys all know what time it is. It is time for blanks, rhinestones, gemstones, diamonds, all of those. We can finally now put them onto the damn crown. Again, from Wikipedia, the real crown has two strings of pearls along the base with a total of 170 pearls. So we're gonna use some, of course, not real pearls, just plastic pearls from AliExpress. And they already in strings, so that's extra, extra handy. Use a 6000 to glue this string of pearls along the metal band of the base. Okay, so pro tip, a 6000, it is the best that you wait for a minute for the glue to get tacky. By then, it is easier to work with the glue, especially if you are gluing stuff like this round pearls, which doesn't have a lot of contact surface. Oh yeah, and make sure that you're doing this by segments, so it's easier to handle. Mm, and then it's starting to come together, that pearls, that string of pearls, they look gorgeous! I love it so much, even though I know it's not real. I think you guys also agree with me that the bedazzling process is quite therapeutic. And so I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm gonna cut off the voiceover now and play some relaxing music for you guys.
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. I love how it looks, and we are ready. For the photo shoot, so I have my friends over, and we actually did the photo shoot two months ago. Some of you guys may already know it from that little sneak peek that I included in the Diamond Wrath Tiara video. Hello, we're about to play Princess Margaret and the Queen. So she's doing her makeup. She's got the whole tea set over here, and. She's gonna turn me into a monster with all this makeup. Mm -hmm. 